Thanks for joining us at Ride On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review is brought to you in part by Dean's Hobby Stop in Owasso, Michigan. Dean's has one of the Midwest's largest selections of used kits at great prices. They also feature new kits and supplies as well. Call Dean's to get their mail order list featuring hundreds of vintage kits or check their website for great deals on both new and classic models. This review covers the American LaFrance Ladder Chief. It's a 125 skill kit from AMT number 1204. Now, American LaFrance was an American vehicle maker which focused on emergency equipment, and they had several locations in the U.S. and Canada, starting out in uh, New York. And they operated all the way through 2014 in one capacity or another. But uh, in 59, they had introduced the 900 series cab forward chassis, and it was uh, quite a bit wider and a new design. And th this uh, model kind of replicates that, and the, the um, company itself uh, ended up in Bluefield, Virginia in a diminished capacity, but uh, they put together a lot of ex excellent equipment for the fire departments and emergency uh, departments uh, around the country. Now this kit was released in 1971 and uh, it as a custom pumper and it went through a number of reboxings and renditions with different uh, iterations of the vehicle. The final release as, uh, as this one was uh, tw in 2020 as the Ladder Chief and it was updated with some new parts and over 400 of them in fact. Now it was molded in white, silver, chrome, clear red, clear amber. Uh, transparent clear vinyl tires and a metal axle and it's also got uh, quite a sizable decal sheet when the kit is finished it's 16 and a half inches long four inches wide and five and a half inches tall now the ladder which is extendable is 39 inches long at full length oh hey that sounds like a new tapping on the glass there he's got uh, he's got our back on production uh, and he's the uh, program director here, but he's got a question about this kit. Uh, what, what's your question, Newt? Yep, that's a great looking model. I bet it took a lot of work. Oh, you bet, Newt. Uh, something like this can take weeks, uh, <laughs> even months actually, uh, depending on the amount of detail that you want to include. But even so, with uh, that many pieces uh, and working parts, uh, this kit would take some effort. And uh, uh, it's generally uh, ascribed to uh, builders that have quite a bit of experience. Well, you see here the contents of the kit. Uh, as you can see, uh, quite a few pieces. Now, it's an old mold, and you'll be contending with uh, parting lines and sprue attachment points. And they're a little bit problemsome on the uh, chrome pieces especially, but um, you'll have to address those if you want. Uh, another thing that you'll have to keep in mind is that you have to scrape the uh, glue or chrome plating from any of the parts that you want to stick together. Now remember to heed the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products that you see or hear used in the review. For the most part, we'll be using um, liquid cement uh, and we'll start with construction right away. Here are the decals for the kit. As you can see, the register is pretty good. The colors are pretty authentic. Um, there's also, you know, city markings for a number of uh, localities here. And uh, you probably won't need setting solution for most of these. They go on flat panels. Um, but uh, be sure to use plenty of warm water to position them and then uh, squeeze off any water with soft uh, Kleenex. So engine uh, construction starts with these pieces, uh, the main block and the heads, etc. So get these out and uh, remember, if you need some clarification, uh, go ahead and take a peek at the instructions which are included at the back of the review. And after you've cleaned up your engine pieces here, sprue marks and scraped the chrome off of the mating surface for gluing, uh, go ahead and assemble the main portions uh, and then when you get to, to the portion where you, you, you're gluing the belt to the alternator and the assembly to the supercharger drive case, it needs to be angled to the right of the engine and the instructions aren't real clear on that. So make sure you look for that and you can see them here in the photos. Also, um, I looked online to find uh, an engine color which uh, seemed to um, be prevalent in these vehicles and so 
I mixed some uh, flat mint green with some regular flat green to get a color that was pretty close um, to what I saw in the photos. And this is my version of it. And then, of course, I just used my uh, airbrush uh, to go ahead and spray that. Now, you may, um, depending on the paint you use, uh, be able to just paint right over the chrome parts. But generally speaking, you may want to remove the chrome parts by putting them in some bleach or, or some oven cleaner, um, you know, uh, in a ventilated area before you uh, assemble those uh, to make sure that the paint adheres to the chrome pieces. Next, uh, you can gather up the, the tires and the rims and the brakes, uh, the pieces for the wheel assemblies. And I painted the rims and the flanges that weren't chrome uh, a red color, uh, uh, the X7 Tamiya. And now glue the brake drums, caps, rims, and flanges together. And then after the wheel parts have uh, dried, you can press the uh, tires over the rims and paint the lug nuts and the front tire center caps chrome. Uh, I use some Tamiya X11. Okay, you're going to have to bear with me because the instructions don't include the frame information for the ladder chief. Apparently, uh, it's for the pumper, the custom pumper. So, I did some uh, investigating here and I labeled the parts and I did a lot of test fitting and looked at other images to come up with this. So, start with the frame rails, uh, parts 156 and 157. The air tanks are part 77. Cross bracers are 176. And there are five of these cross braces, two of which will be used later. Now, the front cross member 147, number 2, cross member 144, number 3, 145, number 4, and the air cleaner box support 146 and 132. Number 5 cross member 148, 6 cross member 170, 7 cross member 169, and the rear cross member 171. Okay, these cross members will be glued in between the frame rails from front to back as shown. Now, glue in the cross braces and the air tanks, and they aren't running board braces. Uh, <laughs> the the emergency air tank or pump support brackets they're they're not there uh, the instructions aren't very helpful in this step now be sure that when you put the glue uh, in you use a slow setting glue and make sure that the frame is square and level you can place it on some graph paper or use a jig in fact uh, some blocking with some tape uh, may be necessary uh, due to the frames irregular shape to uh, put it together properly. Now we'll gather the front suspension parts and re, you know clean them up of uh, uh, sprue points and uh, the seam lines. The instructions will still show the wrong frame uh, and they don't really show the axle orientation well so you'll have to test fit it uh, before you glue it into place. Now glue the springs to the frame and the axle to the springs and look for the tie rod attachment points with uh, to help with your orientation. Then glue the tie rod to the back of the axle and the shocks to the frame and the axle. Now glue the gearbox to the frame and the pitman arm to the gearbox. Then the steering linkage gets glued to the pitman arm and axle and the frame. Finally, you glue the four front brake uh, chambers onto the uh, front backing plates and slide the stub axle into the backing plates and glue the backing plates to the axle without getting glue on the stub axle if you want the wheels to rotate. Now make sure that the axle and the backing plates are at right angles and true with the frame so that the kit will sit on all four wheels. The directions want you to glue the front wheels to the stub axles, but I wanted to paint the frame assembly as a whole first. Now we turn our attention to the rear suspension and the directions will still show the wrong frame, but the suspension parts are correct. Clean up those parts and then where there's a couple of sink marks on the air brake brackets, and shock that you might want to fill with some putty and smooth over. Now start by gluing the axle halves together, then glue the springs to the frame and the axles to the springs. Now make sure the axle uh, and the uh, springs are square and true so that it will sit properly. And now glue the shocks to the axle and the frame. Finally, uh, glue the air chambers to the air brake brackets, then the brackets to the backing plates, and the backing plates to the axle. Now the directions would have you first, uh, you know, use the metal axle and the wheels and install those, but I'm going to paint the frame before I do that. At 
this point, I deviated from the instructions and cleaned up the compartment supports, rear drive shaft, park brake disc, and the midship bearing, which you see here. I wanted to glue those to the frame before painting it. Now glue the brake disc and the midship bearing to the drive shaft, and then glue the nearing, uh, the nearing to the cross member, <coughs> and to the other uh, end of the drive shaft to to the rear axle. Now glue the compartment supports to the frame. Next, I jumped to step 7 to complete some construction before getting into paint. And then uh, I removed the imperfections from the interior tub and the interior parts. And you can start by gluing the clutch pedal, brake pedal, accelerator pedal, and the shifter to the floor of the interior tub. Now glue the driver's seat halves together and glue them to the base and then glue the base to the interior tub floor along with the passenger seat. Next, glue the instrument panel to the dash, glue the radio to the bottom of the instrument panel, and glue this assembly to the interior tub. And finally, glue the steering wheel and the column to the, uh, and glue that to the floor of the interior tub. Next, I got out my sprayer and I painted the, the uh, frame with some Stenel Res brand uh, black primer and then gave the interior uh, a coat of Tamiya semi-gloss after the primer had dried in there and that was uh, X18 uh, from Tamiya. To add a little realism uh, I painted the exhaust a flat black and then I drilled the tip out to uh, make that hollowed. Now I'll get these parts out and clean up the radiator and the shroud, the uh, air cleaner box, the reserve tank and the fuel tank and I painted these with some of the Stenel Res black uh, uh, primer which is actually a good color. Now back to step six. We're going to start with the uh, two final cross braces, uh, PTO shaft, engine, radiator hoses, air pipe, exhaust pipe, front drive shaft, and the lower exhaust pipe. And first, we're going to place the cross braces on the frame. And then I painted the parts with some black Stenel Res primer also. Now, before we put the engine in place, we can do a little bit more detailing. I used a brush to paint the belts and accessories and used some washes to add a little used look to it. Then I detailed the exhaust with some red, brown, and brown wash, and I used black and brown washes to bring out the detail on the engine. Now, uh, glue the PTO shaft to the engine along with the front drive shaft, and while those parts are still pliable, you know, with some slow setting glue, glue the engine to the frame aligning the drive shafts as you go, and then glue the PTO shaft to the frame and to the, the front shaft to the midship bearing. I wanted to place the radiator hoses uh, later and you know when the radiator was going into place uh, and the air pipe placement would come after the air cleaner box was uh, glued into position. So hold off a bit. Now glue the exhaust pipe to the manifolds and the muffler pipe to the exhaust pipe and frame. I glued the radiator shroud then together uh, and then glued that to the frame and finally Gluing the hoses between the engine and the radiator now, you can glue the air filter box uh, together, glue it to the frame, and then glue the air pipe between the engine and the air box. Now glue the hydraulic reservoir tank halves together and glue it to the frame. And finally, glue the fuel tank halves together and glue those to the frame. And now to finish up step 7, I painted the interior details with a chrome pen and dry brushed the floorboard with some flat aluminum to show a little wear and scuffing. Now moving to step 8, I removed the imperfections from the cab. You know, any tabs, sprue tabs, sinks, etc. or uh, parting lines. And then uh, the firewall, the fenders, and the windows and frames were cleaned up as well. I then glued the fenders to the cab and gave everything a coat of the Stenora's black primer. After they were cleaned up and dried, I painted the exterior parts with Tamiya uh, Red X7, and now I cleaned up the fender plates, steps and risers, rear seats, front bumper, and the toe rings and window glass. First, paint the window seals rubber black, and then glue the uh, step pieces there together and glue them to the cab. Glue the front bumper on and make sure that it's aligned with the steps. Now glue the fender plates to the fenders and the toe rings to the front bumper. Glue the windows in with some clear part cement or white glue, and then finally add the interior tub into the cab uh, with some location points and use some good strong glue to keep that in position. Okay, as you can see uh, in step 10, 
<clears throat> it's time to accessorize, and there's a lot of them here, so bear with me. Uh, there's some good information that you might uh, find helpful. Now, the chrome parts got some pretty large sprue attachment points from this old mold, so I trimmed them off and touched it up with a Molotov chrome pen, but you'd have to get them rechromed for something uh, of a competitive nature. Now, I glued the lenses to the chrome parts with clear part cement, and I paint, uh, painted around the front turn signal lenses with a semi-gloss black, leaving the arrow a clear amber. Now, I used a super glue and a looper uh, to apply the rest of the parts in this step. So glue the roof spotlights to the cab and the holes provided between the windshield and the side glass. Next, glue the beacon light assemblies to the roof of the cab. Now there's no positive attachment points there, so test fit and find out what looks right uh, for equal spacing, making sure the same on the both, both sides. Now glue the air horns and the horn belts uh, you know, to the roof of the cab uh, in the holes provided for those. And the grab handles are glued to the holes in the side of the cab along with the door handles. Now glue the headlights and turn signals to the front of the cab. And there's indentations for proper placement there. Glue the bumper to the front plate and glue the bell to the uh, passenger side of the bumper and the siren to the driver's side of the bumper. Now there's really no t positive attachment points for those, so uh, look at the uh, box art and test fit and glue them accordingly. Now I used some super glue to glue the mirror parts together uh, for longer working time to make sure that to ensure proper placement on the cab. And there's no positive attachment points for those mirrors on the cab, so just try to make them look um, even on each side. Finally, the side lights. Uh, these have no attachment points, so carefully glue the tiny post to the cab in front of the top door hinge on both sides of the cab. In retrospect, I probably would not have glued those until the final step because I knocked them off a couple times before I was done. At step 11, clean up these parts for the deck and uh, with the deck placed upside down in some paint bottles, uh, glue the side panel, the side wall, the forward wall, and the interior rear, rear panel and the floor pan to one side of the deck. Now there's some alignment tabs on the deck and the side walls for proper alignment and you repeat that for the other side. But be sure to measure each side for alignment because mine was initially off about an eighth of an inch. Now we can gather up these parts for step 12 uh, and stage them for construction. Remove the imperfections from the uh, outriggers and the turntable frame there and then glue the hydraulic cylinder halves together. And now glue the turntable uh, frame parts to the deck with the cylinders sandwiched on the pins. And don't get glue on the pins so the cylinders can move freely. Now assemble the outriggers and be sure not to get glue on the hydraulic shafts or the ground plates so that they can be positionable. After the deck parts have dried slightly, move the frame parts aside and slide in the outriggers. I removed them again for painting and I painted the outriggers white with some black feet. And next we'll be uh, dealing with some of the deck parts and the turntable piece you see here pieces. Um, and before painting the deck, I wanted to add most of the parts that weren't chrome. Um, so I glued the ladder support halves together and glued those in place. And then I glued the uh, three, three turntable panels into place and cleaned up the parts for the turntable. Uh, you know, parting lines and sprue marks, etc. Now, I set the turntable through the mount plate, uh, its mounting plate, and then I glued the pivot retainer to the turntable. And be careful not to get glue on the mounting plate. Remember, these parts are functional. Um, now glue the stationary platform to the mount plate and make sure that the turntable still turns. So next, glue the uh, mounting plate to the deck. Now there are several points that can't be glued while assembling the ladder pivot main uh, ladder support. So glue the uh, cable drum halves for now and the control pedestal halves and the hydraulic cylinder halves and the caps together. Then glue the two sides of the mount together, sandwiching the pivot in between. And don't get glue on the pivot and repeat for the other side. Now glue the um, pivots to the turntable with the cross shaft set in between with no glue. And then the cable drum in between that's glued in. 
and then glue the drum motor halves around the cable drum. Now glue the main ladder support front uh, glued between the pivots. Now slide the shaft supports into the hydraulic shafts and glue the supports to the turntable without getting glue on the shafts. Next slide the hydraulic cylinders over the shafts and glue the cylinders to the cross shaft and nothing else. And this will allow the turntable to turn and the pivot and the ele elevation of the ladder. So I had painted the, um, the deck uh, with some white stone res primer because it ran out of black. And then I followed it up with the Tamiya X7 Red, but it took several extra coats uh, because uh, I had um, used the black on the cab. In order to match that richness, it took a little extra uh, paint. I used a chrome pen to paint under where the clear lenses are to be placed for some reflectivity. While the red was drying on the deck, I glued the front wheels to the stub axles, being careful to make sure they would still rotate. And now slide the metal axle through the rear axle area and then press the wheels onto the metal axles. At this point I collected all the ladders and uh, I cleaned them all up uh, except for the part number on each part for later assembly. So then I painted the ladders and the deck parts with some aluminum paint. And so now we collect these pieces um, and go back to step 13 which was uh, mislabeled as step 6 and also for step 14 uh, with the steps you see here. And we're going to uh, cover the chrome and clear parts for these steps. Uh, so remove the imperfections and touch them up with a chrome pen. Now set the front and rear engine covers on without some glue and glue the battery boxes in place. Now glue the front and rear ladder support pieces together and glue them to the base and the upper platform to the ladder supports. Now carefully snap the outriggers back in and glue on the fuel cap. Glue the uh, clear backup lenses and red tail light lenses over the chrome painted areas on the rear panel using the clear part cement. Now use the glue uh, now and, and apply it to the rear controls and the rear control lights to the rear panel along uh, with the license plate there. And glue the upper and lower steps making sure they're square and level with each other and the deck. Now glue the handrails to the deck using their alignment holes. Now glue the three ladder supports to the deck in their alignment holes. Next, glue the turntable step, the turntable lock and the motor to the turntable. Now glue the Fresno lights to their placement holes along with the rear support, uh, rear spotlights and after gluing the spotlight lenses uh, in with some clear part cement. Finally, glue the controls and the guardrail to the control pedestal, touching up the control knobs with some flat black. Now I tried to set the deck on the cab and the chassis at this point, but it didn't fit well. The wheelbase did not match the body parts. Now, as the wheelbase was about a quarter inch shorter than the body parts, I removed the rear window from the firewall and trimmed a quarter inch off of the firewall and mounted the rear window even with the back of the front seats in the cab. Now this fixed the wheelbase problem. But there was still a problem with the passenger side and I think it came from gluing the utility doors and the rear wheel opening a little too far to the rear. The tires had the same spacing on each side and after the fixing the cab the wheel spacing is correct but the rear wheels look to be set about an eighth inch too far forward in the wheel well. So uh, when you build your model uh, make sure that you glue that uh, spacing so that that comes out correctly as well. And next we'll gather up the firefighting tools and the aerial ladder parts and clean them up for assembly and paint. I started by painting the wood handles a uh, buff color and then gave them a little uh, Tamiya brown wash for a wood grain look. And then I painted the metallic parts um, a, a medium gray for a steel look. Uh, next, I assembled the ladder. Test fitting is paramount here. I started with the main ladder and glued the rails to the lower portion of the sides and glued the marker lights to the front. Glue the second section to the lower part of the second section's side rails and be sure it slides into the main ladder's parts. Now glue the top section uh, to the top section side rails and make sure that it slides into the second section. Next, glue the lens into the spotlight with some clear part cement. 
Now I painted the latter parts with the gray stencil res and decided the color was good. So I glued the spotlight to the left side of the ladder. But I had the light pointed back as the instructions show, but I think it maybe should be pointed up the ladders uh, in that direction. And now I glued the aerial ladder to the ladder pivot and I scraped the paint and used some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement there. And after that had dried, I used some super glue carefully applied with a glue looper over the same area and touched up the paint. Do not glue the second section or the top section to the main section. Now I glued the pike pulled folding ladder uh, to the upper platform as well and it would have been nice to have some clamps but anyway you can uh, scratch build those if you like. Glue the pick axis to the engine cover and the axis to the battery box. Now I used the City of Troy decals uh, for the cab matching the license plates and some pinstriping for the utility boxes. And there's a lot of decals so you could really make this truck from a, a whole lot of locations. Now I dry brushed the American La France logos on the front and the sides of the cab as well as the rear of the deck. Step 15 and 16 shows placement of the ladders. And when placing the ladders, remove the part numbers and glue the ladders together and then glue them to the ladder supports. Now glue the center ladder brace to the left side of the deck and the upper platform. The instructions indicate not gluing the deck and the cab to the chassis so that you can show off the undercarriage and components. And I find that the deck sits pretty well, but the cab does not have positive mounting points to keep it stationary if not glued. I left it unglued nonetheless, but I had to shift it a lot of times during the photo session. And I, I had to uh, replace some of the chrome parts that got knocked off again. I gave everything except the tires and the aerial ladder a coat of Pledge Floor Care to seal in the decals and shine up the paint. It's a single purpose kit so there weren't many pieces left over. Quite a few decals of course, but this is all I had left and they may have gone to the custom pumper, etc. Well, there you have it. Your kit is finished. Now, this kit had some pretty uh, subpar instructions, as it was really meant for a different version. And there are a number of fit issues that might not be bad on too, on too many kits, but this great big kit with the many parts and steps kind of multiplied its effects. Now, while the finished product looks okay, the builder will see imperfections. And he'll remember <laughs> the aggravation that it takes to build this model. Nonetheless, um, the ratio was too far toward aggravation to be so enjoyable, but if you're looking for this subject matter, you won't find a kit that's much better because it filled the niche uh, from uh, the early days of mechanized um, fire and emergency vehicles. Now, if you really want to build it, um, I wanted to make sure that you knew where the issues were and describe them fully to help you um, get past some of these issues and build another great looking example for your display shelf. So here it is and we hope you enjoyed it. Well, we hope you like this premium step-by-step -step model kit review and so that you don't miss any more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can do that by clicking on the icon on the lower right of any of our reviews and you can go to our Facebook page or our website right on replicas.com. Thanks.